made the great and a crunchy Christmas. I need the great am a detective. I do important things. Today I was doing something important. I was shoveling snow. My dog Sludge was chasing snowflakes. Suddenly, I heard a jingling sound. Annie was coming up our walk with her dog Fang. Fang had bells on his collar and an elf hat on his head. Doesn't Fang look cute? Annie said, just like a giant elf. Sludge looked at me. I looked at Sludge. We both knew that all the bells and elves and jingles and jangles in the world could not make Fang look cute. Fang looked hungry. Fang is not a happy elf, Annie said. This was not good news. Every year, two weeks before Christmas, Fang gets a Christmas card from his mother in the mail. Annie said, "It is now a week before Christmas." And Fang has not received his card. Perhaps she didn't send it. I said, "Would a mother forget Fang?" Annie said, "I need the great wish I could. I need your help to find the card." Annie said, "I have to shovel snow." I said. Fang sat down and glared at me. I need the great was thinking. It was the holiday season. It was not a good idea for a giant elf to be unhappy. I will take your case, I said. Wait here. I went into my house. I wrote a note to my mother. Dear mother, I stopped shoveling snow. I am on a case for a giant elf. The snow won't go away. Neither will the elf. I will be back, love, Nate the Great. I went outside. I spoke to Annie. The mailman leaves your mail in your mailbox, right? Most of the time, Annie said. Sometimes he drops it on the ground near the mailbox. Why does he do that? Sometimes. Fang is so happy to see the mailman that he runs out of the house to greet him. The mailman drops the mail and flees. I, Nate the Great, knew exactly how the mailman felt. I said, "Then what?" Fang runs after the mailman. They both disappear. I run out to get the mail. So there is no chance for anybody else to take that mail. No chance," Annie said. "We must go to your mailbox and look for clues," I said. Annie, Fang, Sludge, and I walked through the snow. It was crunchy under our feet. "Are you missing any other mail?" I asked. "No," Annie said. I walked up to Annie's mailbox. It was so stuffed that pieces of mail were sticking out. I guess that today's mail came while I was at your house," Annie said. I started to open the mailbox. "Watch out!" Annie yelled. It was too late. What must have been the largest single-day collection of holiday catalogs ever mailed to one address landed on me. This was not going to be an easy case. How long have you been getting these catalogs? I asked. For about eight weeks, I collect them. Annie said, "I haven't had a chance to read most of them yet. Last year, I counted one billion nine hundred and ninety-nine things that you could buy." I, Nate the Great, did not want to know what any of them were, but the catalogs could be a clue. I need to see the catalogs that came last week," I said. About the time that Fang's card should have arrived, my catalogs are all mixed up," 
Annie said, "They are in my room." Annie found Sludge, and I went to Annie's room. One whole side of it was covered with catalogs. This was going to be a long day. I walked over and picked up a catalog. I started to look through the pages. An envelope fell out. I pick it up. This looks like your heating bill, I said. Didn't you miss getting it? Annie shrugged. It's never addressed to me or thanks, so it doesn't count. I flip through more pages. A postcard fell out. It was addressed to Fang, but I, Nate the Great, did not think that Fang would want to see it. It was a reminder from the vet for Fang to come in for his shots. I picked up another catalog. I found three envelopes in that one. I spoke to Annie. I have solved your case. Oh, great! Annie said. So where is Fang's card? Solving is one thing. Finding is another. I said. The card must be somewhere in your catalogs. A lot of your mail got stuck inside them. I hope that we won't have to look through one billion nine hundred and ninety-nine things before we find the card. Annie and I looked through one catalog after another. Sludge sniffed each one. Some of the catalogs were for dogs, Christmas food for dogs, Christmas toys for dogs, Christmas clothes for dogs. Fang must be on a mailing list. Envelopes kept dropping out, but none were from Mrs. Fang. At last, I said, "I have not solved this case. I need clues. Do you still have the old cards Fang got from his mother?" "Oh yes, Fang saves them," Annie said. "Here are the ones from the last three years." I looked at the cards. The one from the first year was tiny. It said. Merry Christmas from Mother Fang. May you eat lots of doggy bones and grow. The card must have worked. The card from the second year was bigger. It said, "Merry Christmas from Mother Fang. Are you eating your bones, son? A bone a day keeps the vet away." The third card was even bigger. It said. Merry Christmas from Mother Fang. Wear your booties in the snow. Don't go out when it's ten below. Eat those bones and grow, grow, grow. Mrs. Fang is such a bossy mother, Annie said. She knows Fang loves bones anyway. Let me get this straight, I said. Fang is happy to get these cards. Oh yes. Annie said, "On Christmas Day, he jumps up on my lap. I read him the card. He listens to every word." He jumps on your lap, I said, and he snuggles. Annie said, "Maybe that's a clue. Maybe that's a miracle." I said, "I knit the great was thinking. The cards got bigger each year." So this year's card must be the biggest yet. It should be easy to find. Who else was here last week when the mail came? I asked. Rosamond and her four cats. Annie said she was looking for a cat catalog. Did you get one? Yes, and I gave it to her. Aha! So Rosamond has one of your catalogs. I must go to her house. Sludge and I left. We crunched our way to Rosamond's house. On her front door, there was a big card with a poem and a picture of a cat with a red cap and a white beard. I could tell that Rosamond was going to have a very strange Christmas. I knocked on the door. Rosamond answered it. "You are just in time to help me decorate my cat tree." She said. Sludge and I walked inside. 
The tree was in the middle of the living room. There were tuna fish cans painted red and green hanging from it. All of Rosamond's cats were sitting in the tree. On the bottom branch was Super Hex. On the next branch was Big Hex. On the next branch was Plain Hex. On the top branch was Little Hex. He had a ribbon around his neck with a star hanging from it. Rosamond smiled. Little Hex is the star of my tree. A fine choice, I said. I have come to see your cat catalog. Here it is, Rosamond said. I flipped through the pages. What are you looking for? Rosamond asked. A big Christmas card from Fang's mother to Fang. But it is not in here. That's dog stuff, Rosamond said. You won't find it in a catalog. Rosamond laughed. Then she said, I did find something. I think it's a telephone bill. I will give it to Annie. I said, Pretty soon, she will have no heat and no phone service, only catalogs. Sludge and I walked toward the door. Wait, my tree isn't finished, Rosamond said. It looks finished to me, I said. I wish you and your cats a Merry Christmas. Sludge and I headed for home. I had to think about the case. Pancakes helped me think. At home, I made potato pancakes. I eat them every Chanukka. Happy Chanukka, Sludge, I said. I gave Sludge his card in a bone. Sludge wagged his tail, sniffed the card, and started to eat the bone. Crunch, munch, crunch. You are having a crunchy Chanukka, I said. Do you know what I want for the holiday? Sludge looked up. Clues, I said. I was thinking, do I have any? I knew a lot of facts, but were they clues? I knew that Fang's card was big. I knew that when Fang greeted the mailman, he dropped the mail and ran for his life. I knew that Annie had a strong lap. Forget that one. I knew that Rosamond had the world's strangest Christmas tree. Forget that one, too. I knew that Mrs. Fang was a bossy mother. She kept after Fang to eat bones. But dogs love bones anyway. I looked at Sludge. He kept making crunching sounds with his bone. Hmm... Was he trying to tell me something? He was. He knew what I had to do to solve this case. He knew that I, Nate the Great, had to think like a dog. I did not want to do that, but I had to find the card. Come, I said to Sludge. Sludge and I rushed back to Annie's house. It was hard to do. The snow was getting deeper and deeper. I handed the telephone bill to Annie. Then I said, There is a clue in Fang's old Christmas cards. Each year, the cards got bigger, but that's not a clue. Each year, Mrs. Fang got bossier. She sent stronger messages for Fang to eat bones. That's a clue. So where is this year's message? Annie asked. I, Nate the Great, say that Fang has it. Fang? Yes, he found the envelope on the ground next to the mailbox. Annie looked at Fang. I knew you were a very smart dog, she said. But I didn't know that you knew how to read. He doesn't, I said. But he knows how to sniff and to hide things. Tell me. Does he have a favorite hiding place? Yes, somewhere in the backyard, Annie said. Follow me, I said. Annie, Fang, and Sludge followed me to the backyard. It was covered with snow. There was no trail. Look for a hump or bump in the snow, 
I said. It might be covering a hump or bump of dirt where Fang dug. I see one over there, Annie said. We must dig there, I said. Annie and I started to dig. Fang and Sludge watch. Why are we digging? Annie asked. Isn't that what dogs do? I stared at Annie. Dig, I said. Annie and I dug up a ball, a shoe, and a big, thick, soggy envelope. Hey, it has Fang's name on it, Annie said. She handed it to Fang. Fang tore open the envelope. There was a bone inside. With a card tied to it, it said, Merry Christmas from Mother Fang. Eat! I need the great say that every year Mrs. Fang told Fang to eat bones. Her message got stronger. At last she sent Fang a real bone. It must have come on a day when Fang greeted the mailman. The mail fell to the ground. Fang sniffed the envelope. He knew what was inside. He ran off with it and buried it in the dirt. Then the snow covered it. We uncovered it. Now Fang will have a crunchy Christmas. K solved. Annie looked at Fang. You naughty elf. You made us look for the card and you were hiding it all this time. Annie looked at me. Maybe this is what elves do at Christmas time. No, I said. This is what dogs do all the time. How did you figure that out? Annie asked. I need the great had to think like a detective. I said. I turned to leave. This was the last time I would take a case for a gigantic elf. An elf who did not need me in the first place. An elf who already knew what it took me three and one half hours to find out. Suddenly, the elf dropped his bone. Maybe he knew that Christmas was not until next week. He rushed up to me. He started to lick me. He jingled while he licked. He's saying happy holidays, Annie said. He's saying I'm hungry, I said. Give this hard-working elf an extra bone so he can save his mother's for Christmas. Sludge and I started to walk away. Fang will love you forever, Annie said. Sludge and I walked faster. We headed home. Snow was still falling. Three and one half hours of it. Two shovel. Maybe it would melt if I waited. A month. Sludge and I went up our walk. Candles were shining in the window. It was time for one more card. Happy holidays to everyone from Nate the Great and Sludge.